Now let's have a look at the starter circuit. It comprises a pre-engaged starter motor 1, a relay 2, the ignition switch 3 and the battery 4. Vehicles with automatic transmission are also fitted with a start inhibit switch on the front left hand side of the gearbox. When the ignition switch 45 is turned to the crank position, the control circuit of the relay 47 is completed and its contacts close. The circuit through the starter solenoid 44 is completed and the motor turns, cranking the engine. Let us have a look at troubleshooting the circuit. It is important that the battery is fully charged. It can be checked by measuring the voltage drop across its terminals as the engine is cranked. It must not be less than 10 volts. Next, make sure the engine can't start. This connection of the coil, low tension feed and the oil pressure switch output will not only prevent ignition but also engine flooding. Ensure that all connections are secure and clean, particularly the battery connections and the engine earth straps. On vehicles fitted with automatic transmission, the operation of the start inhibitor switch should be checked with the handbrake and the foot brake fully applied. Next, the operation of the starter motor relay. The output from its contacts should be at battery voltage when the starter motor is operated. An excessive voltage drop between the relay and the solenoid during cranking indicates a poor connection or a damaged connecting lead. An excessive voltage drop between the battery positive terminal and the starter input terminal during cranking indicates a poor connection, a damaged lead or a faulty solenoid. The solenoid can be checked by measuring the voltage drop across its terminals as the engine is cranked. It should be practically zero. Finally, connect the voltmeter between the commutator end bracket and the battery earth. Again, the voltage drop should be practically zero. If not, clean all earth connections, including the engine to chassis bonding strap. If the fault persists, the starter motor should be removed from the car and bench tested. That completes this section on the starting circuit. Further information will be found in the Starvey programs Electrical Troubleshooting and Vehicle Electrics Overhaul. The electrically operated fuel supply system is linked to the starter circuit through the starter motor relay. It comprises an immersion type fuel pump and tank unit 1, an oil pressure switch 2 and a warning lamp 3. With the ignition on but the engine stationary the oil warning lamp 81 will light as an earth path shown in brown is completed through the fuel pump 82 and through the oil pressure switch 80. When the engine is cranked the control circuit red of the starter motor relay 47 is completed. The fuel pump, 82, operates as the relay completes the circuit yellow through the oil pressure switch, 80. With the engine running, oil pressure will cause the contacts in the pressure switch, 80, to change over. Current is now supplied to the fuel pump, 82, from the ignition circuit. This is shown in yellow. The warning lamp, 81, is extinguished as both of its terminals are at the same potential. If oil pressure drops below a critical level, the contacts in the pressure switch 80 change over. This cuts the power supply to the fuel pump 82 and completes the circuit shown in yellow through the warning lamp 81, causing it to light. Another advantage of this arrangement is to minimize the fire risk in the event of an accident. When the engine stops, the fuel supply is cut off. Now, troubleshooting the system. Always start by checking the engine oil level. If this is correct, 
check the connections to the oil pressure switch. It is important that they are fitted correctly. Although later cars have a plug that can only be fitted one way, on earlier cars the switch was connected by three Lucas. Then check that the warning lamp goes out as the engine is cranked. Providing the oil pump has not failed, this confirms the operation of the pressure switch. The electric fuel pump and sender unit is reached by removing a grommet located beneath the carpet in the rear of the car. If the pump is ever disconnected, when refitting, ensure that its red and black leads are connected according to the markings on the pump casing. They determine its direction of rotation. That completes this section on fuel supply. If necessary, rerun the section before continuing with the program. Electronic ignition is fitted to the 3500. The system comprises a distributor with a built-in amplifier unit, an ignition coil and a ballast resistor unit. A conventional distributor uses a cam and points to make and break the low tension supply to the ignition coil. Here, the cam is replaced by a timing rotor, one, and the points by an electronic pickup, two. An amplifier is also built into the distributor. The philosophy of electronic ignition is described in the Starvey program, Electronic Ignition. When the engine is running, the low tension supply shown in yellow to the coil, 84, is from the ignition switch, 45, via the ballast resistor unit, 83. During engine cranking, however, the low tension supply is from the starter solenoid via a lower resistance in the ballast resistor unit. This ensures an increased voltage to assist starting in adverse conditions. The ballast resistor also supplies current to the amplifier in the distributor 85. The lower connection on the ballast resistor provides the tachometer 86 with a pulse chain from the coil primary winding. Now troubleshooting. If misfiring is the problem, the initial checks are the same as for conventional ignition systems. Make sure that all connections are clean and secure, then check the condition of the plugs. Look for signs of tracking or damage to the components of the HT circuit. Next, with the ignition switched off, check the air gap between the rotor and the pickup module. Incidentally, one cause of misfire is a broken lead between the pickup and the amplifier. This has been known to cause an intermittent connection. The fault can be proved by removing the vacuum advance pipe to prevent the pickup moving. Finally, if the fault persists, check the ignition coil and then the amplifier module by substitution. If the engine won't start, first check the fuel supply. If this is all right, then check the air gap between the rotor and the pickup module. Refit the distributor cap and switch on the ignition. Then check that battery supply voltage is reaching terminal SW on the ballast resistor. When doing this, take care not to short the terminal to the case of the ballast resistor. Next, position the timing rotor so that the pickup module 2 is between two ferrite rods 1. Then measure the voltage at the coil positive terminal. If it is not between 4 and 8 volts, replace the ballast resistor unit. On no account should the ballast resistor unit be bridged. Battery voltage would cause severe damage to the amplifier. Semiconductors don't give you a second chance. Now disconnect the coil negative terminal and with the ignition still switched on, measure the output voltage. If it is less than 9 volts, the coil should be replaced. If the fault persists, the amplifier module should be replaced. Finally, a few words of warning. First, take great care not to short the ballast resistor terminals to the case. 
Secondly, it is important that the ballast resistor unit is not confused with that fitted to Jaguar and Daimler vehicles. The resistance values differ and damage will result if the wrong unit is fitted. That completes this section, but as we said earlier, further information on the system can be found in the Starvey program, Electronic Ignition. Before we finish part one, a word about engine diagnosis. Fitted to all models is a magnetic pickup and diagnosis socket. This is to enable dynamic ignition timing and idle speed checks to be carried out accurately. These checks are performed using the Krypton BC-98, the Sun Tester or other BL recommended equipment. A direct readout of engine speed and ignition timing is given. That completes part one of this Rover Electrics program. In part two, we will be looking at instrumentation and also the special equipment that can be fitted to the range.